if we were winding the tapes to the beginning of this year, how has this inflation story played out in your mind? What have you been observing? What have you been thinking about it as this story's played out in real time? Yeah, so as it's played out in real time, I guess I would take it back to summer of 19, and people can find this online. It was on a Real Vision interview called The Fed to the Rescue. And to me, it seemed clear that the U.S. had a balance of payments problem, basically, and the foreigners weren't buying enough of our debt. And it was going to culminate one of two ways. Either you were going to have a very big deflationary risk off. Briefly, I thought my base case was the Fed would come in and begin growing their balance sheet again, effectively to help finance U.S. deficits. And we didn't even never even had a risk off. We had the repo rate spike, which was really the only physical manifestation in the bond market from it, where you had 48 hours where repo rates at the front end of the treasury curve went to 8 to 10%. And then the Fed came in and started growing their balance sheet again. And they've been growing it pretty much ever since. And my view on this was that this was ultimately going to be inflationary, focused more on the asset inflation side at that point. When you fast forward then to March of 2020, and we watch what the government did, which was this marriage of the fiscal side with QE, with monetary stimulus, that historically has been very powerful in terms of how they'd react. And there too, we'd written a lot in late 2019. There was a BlackRock white paper in August of 2019 by uh, former Fed Vice Chair Stan Fisher and a couple other former central bankers from around the world. And what they said is, look, in the next crisis, we're out of ammo. And what we're going to do is the fiscal side is going to spend a lot and we're going to buy it up. And we're going to cap yields. And this is a classic definition of helicopter money. The government hands out money and issues debt and we buy the debt. So that's basically helicopter money, which is inflationary, not just for assets, it's inflationary for everything. So as we move through this year, that's what we've seen. And it sort of snuck up. I think the thing that surprised me, like a lot of people, is I was not as close to the supply chain difficulties that we've seen, which I think were a forcing factor, along with obviously COVID disruptions, I think were obviously another forcing factor to this. But it's pretty clear historically that you can generate inflation when you say extremes inform the means, right? You can always generate inflation. If the government came out and handed us all a billion dollars each and then issued however many quadrillions or quintillions of dollars of debt that is to offset it and the Fed buys it all, we're going to have inflation, a lot of inflation. And so if we can assume that. Then we say, okay, well, the Fed who handed, they didn't hand out a billion to everybody, but they handed out whatever it was, four grand, 10 grand, whatever the heck it was. And the Fed bought it all. And we're seeing that on a lag. There were some other contributing factors, but I think that as you walk through it is how we've seen it develop. 